when it comes to having cracks in bowls, do you leave them? Do you throw it in the fireplace? Do you use it for a dog food scooper? It kind of depends. I was checking out Mike Mahoney's website, and it's one of the things I learned from him, which I considered a very valuable lesson. He guarantees his bowls because they are free from any kind of cracks or defects. Cracks or defects means knots running through them or cracks that are already in it. And this is one here. This is actually the pith or the center of the tree. There are a couple of minor cracks over there and I put some super glue in it and a little bit of sawdust. And when these are sanded and finished out, if you have it up on the shelf, somebody picks it up to look at it, they always first thing go up and they'll rub it like that and they kind of you know, look at it and they say, is that going to hold? It's been pretty well repaired and that should last a good long time. And they'll always put it back on the shelf and pick up the one that doesn't have any cracks in it. And I started thinking about all the extra time that I spend sanding these out and fixing them and filling them and fixing them and stuff. And I figured, you know, unless it's a very special piece of wood, like from somebody's family tree that they used to swing in when they were kids, I won't bother with repairing them. It's just not worth the effort. It takes more time. You'd have to charge more money to get your money's worth out of it. And, you know, life is too short to turn crappy wood. Pretty bowl. I may fix it and sell it for cheap. I don't know. I just haven't gotten around to it. And this was turned a couple years ago. Now this is a crack that I may fix and repair. I've already dribbled some glue into it. I like to, when I'm dripping the CA glue into it or the instant glue, after I put the thin stuff on while it is still wet, put some of the thicker and medium bodied stuff in and the thin stuff will suck it all the way down into the very bottom of the crack. This crack did not go all the way through to the other side. And if I'm a good boy and when I get around to it, I'll actually reverse this one and try to turn away all of that crack. I just like them to be nice and solid. I don't want it to crack after somebody has bought it. These dark marks here, those are metal stains. Water on steel equals rust or oxidation. Very typical in these. Um, sometimes this can be sanded out. Best solution I've found thus far, good old concentrated lemon juice. A few drops on that and it's gone in about five minutes doesn't affect finishes or anything, but it'll get rid of your metal stains. In fact, those are gone right now. If you let it sit for a few days, it'll take a little longer to get out. Just if you don't want to avoid sanding those out, concentrated lemon juice. I do like to sign and date almost all of my pieces. If nothing else, just for curiosity for me. And, you know, who knows, maybe somewhere down the road I'll be rich and famous and collectible. Um, I like using a pen. Some people will use the wood burners. Um, I'll put wood species. The month I turned it in, year, my signature. And what I like to use for writing that on there, uh, this is called an archival pen. It has India ink on it. Um, it's acid free. This is available in my local big box grocery store. Um, your Sharpies tend not to work nearly as well. They will fade and run, especially when you put a little bit of oil on them. And these, after I autograph them, I do like it to sit for 24 hours or so before I put a finish on it. Um, it does need a little bit of cure and drying time. And if you're using a lacquer type finish, uh, sometimes if it hasn't cured, it will run a little bit. But, you know, it's nice to sign them and date them. Just makes them a little more what, official or... <laughs> makes them a little more artistic or something like that, but just, you know, says who you are and what you do.